uh, <laughs> fall morning. Good to be on the interwebs with folks this morning. Let's get our stream up and running and start saying hey to some of you early risers. All right. So here we go. James, good morning to you. Matt and Judy, good morning to you. Cheers with uh, coffee. Uh, Miss Wendy Mosa up in uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Good morning to you. Michelle and Rylan, what's up, Team Freckles? Ilya, good morning to you. Good to see you, bud. Uh, Brenda, good morning to you. Um, Virginia, good morning to you, Miss Virginia. Uh, Frank, good morning to you. Rennie and Gray, good morning, ladies. Good to see you. Miss Andrea Hewitt, uh, Flower Power over in Vancouver, good morning to you. Um, Emma, good morning. Ingrid, good morning. Uh, Rob, good morning to you. Uh, Miss Barbara over in uh, the UK, good afternoon to you. Uh, Mandy, good morning to you over in Baker, Montana. Miss Alyssa, good to see you this morning, friend, uh, out in uh, Palouse. Um, Carol, good morning and getting ready for work. Well, thanks for hanging in with us while you're getting ready. Miss Misty, out in the big city of Endicott, good to see you this morning, girl. Um, Stephanie, good morning to you. Um, yeah, all kinds of folks jumping on. We are going to be in Galatians 6. 22 through 26 today, 6, 22 through 26, and we're going to be jumping in and talking about um, how do we know if we're on track, uh, synced up, living by the Spirit. Um, it sounds awesome in theory, and it's a super kind of Christianese type stuff to say, you know, live a life that's synced up with the Lord. Um, be on track with God, but what does that actually look like? How would you how would you actually know um, and have some affirmation? Um, how do you know when other people are doing it, right? So that's what we're going to get into this morning. Morning, Karen. Uh, good to see you this morning. Kayla, good morning to you. Miss Cheryl, good morning to you. Leanna, good morning. Scott down in Missouri, good morning to you. Miss Jessica Biles, good morning to you. And Lori, good morning. And Daisy, good morning. Uh, Ron and Toby, good morning to you guys. Short Stuff, good morning to you from Oregon. You made it. Good job. Angie, good morning up in uh, Spokane or Cheney or somewhere in between. Carson, good morning to you. Uh, Sonia up in Bonners, good morning. Robin here in Pullman, good morning. Amber up in Post Falls, good morning. Jill and Cedro Woolley and Randy and Bonners, we got people from all over tuning in. So good job, everybody, for rolling out on a cold Tuesday morning and staying at your warm kitchen table or a car or wherever you're at. Um, hey, uh, this morning while we're commenting, uh, where's your go-to spot that you watch Jesus time from? Car, table, couch, bed, uh, drop it in the comments and let us know. I think it'd be fun for everybody to see um, what's the most common spot that uh, everybody watches from. While uh, you guys are doing that, I am gonna pray for us and uh, and then we're going to jump into Galatians. Uh, did I say Galatians 6? Galatians 5. I'm like, we're not in Galatians 6 yet. Uh, Galatians 5. I'm sorry. We're doing Galatians 5, 22 through 26. The end, of, the end of chapter 5. All right. All right. Ready? Lord, we love you. We just thank you so much for your word. Um, thanks this morning for all these friends getting together, that we can spend time in your word, that we can uh, draw near to you, Lord, that we can get some affirmation um, to help us know when we are on track, when we're being led by you, um, in sync with you as our leader. Um, it's easy to see when we're off track, like we talked about yesterday, Lord, all the what happens when our sinful desires take over. Um, but I think for a lot of people, it's harder to know when we're actually on track and walking the walk. And so, Lord, speak to us this morning. Teach us and uh, encourage us. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, Mr. Sexy always watches from the covers, of course. Uh, getting ready for work. 
the couch, uh, looking out the window, uh, workout, uh, work or the gym, a bunch of people from watching from all over. So funny comments. Love it. Uh, watch from the kitchen table or bed. Um, in my lazy boy, Randy says, that's awesome. All right, here we go, except I can't see my tiny word. So here we go. Galatians 5, uh, 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So, kind of a cool cool deal right here is... Um, it, you know, yesterday we talked about the, the sinful desires and it's, it's sort of easy to see when we're very off track. Sexual immorality, impurity, uh, lustful pleasures, idolatry, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties. Like people know when you're not walking with God. It's, it tends to be obvious when you give in to your sinful desire. What seems to be harder is to know and have affirmation that you're on track. And so... The thing that we've got to remember is that we can only produce this kind of fruit if we're actually uh, synced up with Jesus. And Jesus uses words and pictures in uh, John 15 that talk about a branch um, remaining in the vine. Uh, and so sticking with, hooked up to, connected, um, we can only bear fruit so long as we are uh, hooked up, staying connected with Jesus, uh, the vine, the giver of life. And so as we are connected with Jesus and remaining in him and sticking with him and are glued to him, you know, those are the kind of images that we need to have in mind. As we do that, the, the longer we stay synced up, connected with Jesus, the healthier our branch becomes and the more fruit it will produce, right? And we have evidence in our life that we're actually remaining in him when we see in our lives things that only God can produce. Like it, it can only come. We may be able to produce like willpower versions, like little, little uh, hollow fruits that are just temporary growers out of just willpower, like patience or kindness or, or goodness. But when we're talking about long-term, big old branch full of fruit, healthy, vibrant, life-giving fruit like that only comes when we are connected with God and we know we can get affirmed that we're connected with God when we see uh, that kind of fruit growing in our lives right like love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness uh, gentleness and self-control these are things that are evidence or affirmations that um, we are doing what Jesus talked about doing in John 15 um, so one of the things I think is really, really important, um, I've been going through some cool leadership stuff with my team and, and just being reminded over and over of how important um, affirmation is and feedback is when we're uh, in relationship with other people. It's really important to let people know what they're doing right and to let people know um, how they're doing um, and when they're doing things good and when you see good things uh, going on in their life to call that stuff out, to affirm it. Um, particularly, I think it's really important with our family, kids, spouse, um, really good friends. When we see the fruit of the Spirit in other people that we care about, I think it's really powerful and really important for us as Christians to call that out. To, you know, when you're with somebody um, and you know that, uh, for example, off the top of my head, your kids are are walking with the Lord, they're, they're doing their devotions, they're doing good, they're following God, they're doing school at home, and a lot of kids are really struggling with patience, and you're watching your child um, really be patient and just hang in there and have endurance and just, and just kind of persevere. It, it's cool to be able to say, you know, I don't know if you realize this, but a lot of kids don't have the kind of patience you have. Like the patience I'm watching uh, growing in you 
shows me like that's fruit of the spirit and then bring them here and read this and say like I, I just wanted you to know that this is evidence that you're really you're really walking with the Lord and how cool is that like I'm just proud of you it's so exciting to see good fruit growing on your tree and man you want to see a kid just well up and just swell up with joy from the inside um, that's a good way to be and the same things are true for your spouse um, for other people in your church volunteers uh, staff if you're going to a church to, to call out good things and the people that are leading um, so anyways those are some things to uh, be chewing on and be thinking about where do you see the fruit uh, of the Spirit growing in your life and particularly when you see it growing in the lives of others do you take the time to actually call it out to highlight it and uh, make a big deal out of it so it's pretty cool um, the rabbit trail in here today is John 15, particularly verse 4 and 5. John 15, 4 and 5. Go track that one down and um, write it in your nugget journals. Stick it on the fridge. It's super important because it's the key to this kind of fruit growing in your life. Um, without knowing what Jesus talks about in John 15, 4 and 5, you, you won't have this kind of fruit. All right? So little secret mission there all right I'm gonna just say hey to a few more people jumping on and good morning Ingrid good morning um, and uh, Susie good morning uh, good to see you on here haven't seen you in a while hope you're well uh, Carson good morning um, let's see we've got um, Karen good morning to you Tiana good morning to you it's uh, it's kind of fun Corey good morning it's cool seeing everybody's uh, where they watch from um, <laughs> coffee um, uh, office uh, from the truck or a job site Scott yep that makes sense um, dorm room desk uh, table or bed couch right so people are watching from all over the place um, Anyways, really cool stuff. Be thinking about uh, where you see uh, godly fruit growing in the lives of people around you and um, take some time to think about how would you actually call that out and uh, making a big important deal about seeing fruit in your friends and family and then acknowledging it. So anyways, uh, <laughs> and she says, sorry, it made me laugh. Great big fruits. Yeah. Keep an eye out for great big fruits. And I mean the good kind. All right. So you never know. I better stop talking. Or I'm going to get in trouble. All right, here we go. Let me pray for us and my, and me and uh, get rolling on a Tuesday, man. Lord, we love you. Um, Thanks for your word. Thanks for all these friends. Thanks for laughter and a sense of humor, um, particularly in these weird times with everything. We're just charged with political correctness and COVID stuff and so many different opinions about everything. And God, it's, it's good to remember to not take ourselves too serious and be able to just laugh. Um, thanks for giving us a sense of humor. Um, and uh, thanks for giving us your word and your son and uh, Lord thanks for the instruction he gave um, that we've got recorded in John 15 um, that we know the way to live a life that will produce godly fruit so help us to um, just really pursue that with our whole heart um, more important than anything else and so we just pray these things in Jesus name amen all right I am off and running for the day. Morning, Richie. I see you just popped on here. Good to see you this morning. Hope you're doing well over in Baker. Kelsey, good morning to you too. Uh, Miss Linda, good to see you. I am uh, out of here. Y'all have a fabulous Tuesday. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Bye.